Uh, we're going back to talk about the controller. We sort of left it off on a rant. Uh, so we're going to go back on. We have gone away, had some food, and time to think about it. Uh, so we've really gone to our friends lists to think about it. I mean, Stewie, he's PlayStation. He's kind of made that obvious. That he's going to be a PS4 only guy since his PS3 broke. Um, then again, you know, I would love to turn around and say that she was going to be our first clan member that's hopped on an Xbox, but to be kind of dead honest, I don't really think he's into the Xbox at all. His eyes lit up when he was playing with a Pro Circuit controller on the PlayStation, mm -hmm. and then to use the PS to go back to the PS4, which you can catch the review on the Twitch channel or on YouTube. We've got it there as well of us playing. Disastrously. <laughs> and zombies. <laughs> and PS3. Yeah, we didn't do too well that time. Oh, God. Oh, no matter time. what map we do, we should. And then we went on to Extinction on I the PS4 <laughs> and dominated it. Yeah, I think the big difference is like when you've got three people on one screen, it's nowhere near as easy to you know, see what the hell's going on. Two people, no kind of fun. Three no, people. no, we, we did three on the PS4 on the big flat screen. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We did uh, two people on PS. Uh, we did three people on PS3, and that was just me and you. An extension on PS4. Remember? Oh yeah, that's right. Because he came home, didn't he? Yeah, you went home first, and then so I could go to work the next day. <laughs> yes, see that. Oh, that because I can lay my bad leg on that drawer. Um, but yeah, no. Um, he, he's quite good, but I really don't think he's going to ever join us on. You're not getting a signal. Nope, I don't get a signal here. O2. Why are you with? I'm with O2, I get a signal. Seriously? Yeah. I'm on O2 contract right now. Well, I'm um, technically with O2, I'm with GIFGAF. Yeah, I'm barely. It basically, it keeps going in between getting a signal and not getting a signal. Well, I've got 30% of a signal. Uh, trust me, I'm in the window, will you? Mm. Okay. I'm able to pick up a signal. Just don't worry, my room's falling apart. Collapsing around her ears. No, you're probably going to have to quickly run your side and send it and come back. Well, I rebuild the yeah. loop. Like a motic. Uh, yeah. I'll be back. We're going to go over. Um, we're really at the stages. Oh, I'm going to quickly pop the thing on the door. Oh, yeah. I don't get it, it's like your room's a bloody Faraday cage. What? It's like your room's a bloody Faraday, uh, Faraday cage. Oh, that happens, mate. Where can you win? I walk out I walk out to the door, perfect signal, I walk in here, just dies. Oh, I suppose the, the, the mm. Wi-Fi probably from the 360. Oh, there was a hell of a lot of signals in there going all around the place. Yeah, well, uh, a that. lot of wiring. Well, wiring is just around this desk. I'm just going to blame all of this setup. Just blame yeah. all of setup and just <laughs> throw any doubt out the window. Definitely. Where were we? We were on about thinking about choosing member to to give the custom controller to. Ooh, I know you would never use it, but could you give you could give it to a big boss man? It's a terrible idea. Big boss man? Oh, Steven. Yeah. It's no, a terrible idea. No, no, it's son's got a scoff. <laughs> No, th it was actually Stephen that gave me the idea to do a custom controller uh -huh. all up in B BKK colours, and I said, that would be brilliant, and I couldn't get the fucking colours. <laughs> so, um, that's the other thing. We're going to get to select colours. I've got, like, three choices of colours. We could do it, we could go and try and copy the optic scuff controller and go with the green and the black co combo, but it would be green and white, so it would be an optic nation instead of optic gaming. Uh, controller, but the only people that would get the gist of that would be us, mm -hmm. because I came to the. I don't want to give it to Mikey because uh, Mikey literally is a lying little shit. To be bluntly <laughs> honest, and I don't think he's deserving of it. He's been slagging off the MLG right, left, and center. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think building on an MLG style controller is. Re to me, it would feel like rewarding that behavior. Yeah. Now, I know 
Barry's feeling a bit lonely and left out of the whole scenario. We've really sort of like adopted Stuart and really gone off on that sort of our own tangent with the PS4 and the PlayStation and even the PC game and we sort of like fucking bury Barry in the back hills and beyond. We really have. I, I mean, it sounds to me individual, mate. No, but I think, like, you know, even Aaron was saying to me the last time we were talking at Tesco, it was like, mm-hmm. uh, Barry's been... I really hate to say it. Barry was the one, he got the money from his inheritance and blew it. You know, he took, got five grand. Okay, yeah, I had ten grand, but I've blown it on a career course, mm-hmm. which I've nearly completed. I've just got my grand to do. I paid off all my debts. Mm-hmm. I rebuilt my computer, I got my Xbox, I got uh, all the gear I needed, I've been away at two events, I've participated in the charity events, I now have an awesome MLG team, well not an MLG team, I've got an awesome esports team, um, I have gotten like, you know, traveled tons, I've made tons of new friends, I've unfortunately I think it killed my relationship getting money, but no wrong. But you know, I, I've done all that. Barry bought filled his house full of TVs. I think the issue to put this is while you put all this you know, you were sad like something bad happened, sadly, you mm-hmm. know. But what you gain out of it, you put towards improving your own life substantially. You know, yeah. you've gone, you've learned, you've educated yourself, you've travelled, yeah. you know, you've experienced. Well, Barry's kind of um, not nothing wrong against the guy. He's still a mate of mine, but we're, we're not slagging Barry off by yeah. any means. We're just insinuating that to do something for Barry, in some aspects, the way uh, by just with, the way that I'm trying to portray it is how he's vocally. Um, replied to us of how he feels of how we have treated him. Because the last time he spoke to Aaron, Aaron told him that I was heading away for a month to do my course and all that. And his exact words was, well, is he and everybody else too busy to come and tell me directly? Well, like, no, there's nothing wrong with him. It's just a case of like, hey, you only said to the people, like, you barely told me. I yeah, I mean, if I hadn't walked into the hydro, yeah. literally the she day told before, me, uh, no, I think you told me like three hours before you left. Oh, much. that's what I'm saying. Literally walked into your place to get a cable to mm. go away with for my laptop, or I think it was actually the PlayStation actually. Mm. But anyway, I was in looking to get a power cable, and literally I bumped into you. It was like. Okay, I had spoken to Aaron two days before that, but the only reason it was because he nearly ran me over in Tesco's with a bloody trolley. <laughs> so, I mean, th- you can't... Uh, and my reason for that, in a nutshell, was everybody makes, in, in especially in Shetland, makes such a big deal about me going away. Mm. Yeah, I go away, and I can be up to a month, three months, six months to a year, but... It happens, you know? I mean, Barry, wa- I mean, the reason I really didn't want to tell Barry was because, if you remember back when I was going off to sea, yeah. Barry wanted to throw a party that- every time I wanted to leave the bloody island. Yeah, it's a kind I mean, of case of like, oh, um, oh we're never going to see you again, we must have a huge big event, it's like, well, I'll be coming back. Yeah. So, oh, big, fancy but, event. but you lie, the last time you did it, you were away for six months. Barry, I got a job. Mm. Well, it happens. It happens. But say yeah, that. But it's never like I'm never returning. Mm. You know, it's, it, can, I can understand it if I was being evicted from Shetland. <laughs> or I was pleasantly actually going to depart. But Barry makes... And nothing against him. I, mean, I can understand him. But he just... To me, he just gets in a way of I and let me finish. He gets in this he gets in this mindset that he has to do these things and whether you say no Barry or yes Barry, it's irrelevant. You know? You're trying to I mean, his dad and me when we were friends, me and his dad never got on. Mm. Me and his mum never got on. 
now we get on and even they've come up to me and they've said, look, could you not tell Barry to do this and do that and do the third thing? Like I have some sort of mythological way of getting Barry to do something. They were like, can you not at least get him to go to the job centre to try and get a job? I was like, whoa, how am I supposed to do that? I'm working, you know? Mm. And that was the other thing. When Barry lost his job, and it's, I never wish it on anyone, honestly, but I really felt bad because I first saw that happening way back even when I worked with them in the same company. It was like, you are a health and safety nightmare. And if you're not willing to follow the rules and obey someone else, mm. you're gonna end up in severe trouble. And he did. He, he didn't listen to the doctors, he didn't listen to the physicians, he didn't listen to his parents, and he didn't listen to the to the work. And what happened? He got fired because he couldn't turn up for work. Mm. So he got, eventually they just knocked him one procedure after another until they got him out the door. And that's what companies do. It's their only ramification. It's putting in there for when you get really bad workers. And that's how you get rid of them. But there's not a company in the world that's going to hire, hire you to sit on your ass on sick pay. Mm. And if you don't go to work and you don't do your hours, you're breaking the law in the aspect of you're not fulfilling a legal binding contract. And Barry was like, oh, but I've got epilepsy and I've got this and I've got this and they have to do... No, they don't. Hmm. They have a duty of care to a certain point. And I hate to tell you that that's about three months. Yeah, it's a case of like, the, the legal specifications is they must be able to make um, adjustments yeah. to suit someone with disabilities. However, once it reaches a certain point, there's really nothing they can do. They can't put... But like, in, in fortunate in Barry's case... They couldn't pin him to a chair, hold his nose, and shove the fucking medicine down his neck. Mm. When as soon as Barry told me, he knew better than the doctors. He knew what medication he had. Never to take. say you know better than the doctors. You he said that. it to me, and Seriously. I was his rep. I was his union officer, and I was literally hand in heads going, Barry, I can't write that. I can't do that. If you are publicly declaring to me, you're refusing medical instruction mm -hmm. we don't have a duty of care to do with you oh but it's what's making me ill fine take the medication get ill come back to me then mm. then we can turn around and say obviously the doctor's making you sick you know find another doctor mm. but all this is common knowledge to him he's had this condition for th 30 years nearly. Yeah. It's not new. You know? If he's got a mental illness and disorder and he can't work, fine. Go to disability. But he doesn't even do that. Yeah, like, folks, we're not, like, trying to be... But the problem is, he is really unwilling to do this. Like, yeah. It, it's probably what's best for him. He, he would benefit socially... For mm -hmm. us doing this controller and giving it to him and getting him on the Xbox and getting him communicating with people and everything else. However, I personally feel that until Barry comes out of his mystic, imaginary reality of like how he perceives things getting better... I mean, to dump £2,500 into a project that was lunacy to start with. Did you hear about that? Uh, I think so. Was that the networking concept? That was, yes. He was going to create his own wife as WWI5 concept. Now, conceptually, good idea. Hey, uh, doing it practically uh, with him... It's not that, right, it does work, there are, don't get me wrong, it does exist, however, it cannot be done for £2,500, mm -hmm. two, it's highly illegal 
to run it off of someone else's broadband, mm. you have to one set up your own telephone exchange for a start. You have to then purchase ban direct bandwidth from the national grid. You know that's buying from wherever you put your station down the overseas cable to the main grid and then pay the governing body to have the broadband services sent up. That's why when you look at certain lower per like um, Plusnet, Talk Talk and all that, you and it says you must already have a BT landline because they're basically They've skipped buying that national grid bro and it's fucking expensive. To get your spot costs <laughs> millions. I mean, I kid you not. Hmm. It, it, t for BT to to put in the fiber optic costs them in excess of sixteen billion to put the network in. Doesn't surprise me. So the idea that Barry was going to set up uh, a world Wi-Fi network. From his house for two thousand five hundred, and it be legal. I don't think was illusion. What he was trying to do, like it, it was a bit of a pipe dream behind. Just like, oh yes, I can do this whole thing and make it work. I think if he'd gone for like more of a proof of concept kind of thing, no, right. not like no, like a full on proof of concept. If he proved it could be done like, in a very localized area, if he'd like no, actually, it, it can be done, yeah. but it's already been done, hmm. right? You buy the gear to do it. It's for sale. Like the, the raw gear mm -hmm. would cost you about 2500 mm -hmm. But, and here's the big ass but, you need to put it into the grid. At some point, it has to have a landline. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, you've got two choices. You either buy a corporate BT landline, mm -hmm. which, let's face it, you're not buying it, you're renting the darn thing. Or you pay the national grid to have a line putting in all the way from the telephone um, directory. directory from I think it's Buckinghamshire. That it's, yeah, like that, yeah. it's basically it's part of the government buildings. Mm -hmm. It's where the regulation office is. Another reason why people really it's really sort of security down there. Or you go down the illegal route, which is like a muppet up the road here has fucking done, and that's hack your local transfer exchange. Oh yeah, it's right across the road from them. Mm -hmm. It's again when you look at the power transistor. Yeah. Well, that's about half of it. And then you've got the oh, yeah, telephone but... one, and then you've got the broadband one, and he's fucking hacked bits into the next one. They've replaced it twice this year to try and stop him. I, but there's no cameras on it, so they can't prove it's him. And we can't prove it either. No, we can't. We're just making random guesses. No, we do know it's him. No, no, we're making random guesses. No. We're making random guesses. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to prove it. No, I don't say that. But anyway, yes, we're, we're, we're making specula <laughs> speculation that it's him. By mere process of elimination, we're pretty close. Well, put it this way, if it was Andrew Simmons, he'd barbecue himself. <laughs> if it's the insociable lots in the corners here, we'd find them fried. Yeah. The, there's only like three people in the square that would do it, and personally, I already have the police looking down my neck. Mm. In fact, we actually did have the BT and the police here checking actually our network connections when they investigated it. We, we brought it up! We called it in, and we were the first people to investigate. I kid you not, we were. Um, but anyway, that's that's for another time. But yeah, no, I mean, he is deserving of the controller. I mean, I think he would use it, and I think it would be a good tool for him. However, is he deserving of it on an alternate level? I think if, say... He like actually you know, sat down and realized I need to set down some short term goals and some long term goals 
Or realistic yeah, goals. Know, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Realistic, long and short-term goals. And actually, blah, 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 his life, you know. <laughs> Maybe then, yeah. Surely, I'd, yeah, I'd give it to him in a heartbeat. Like, it was a case of, yeah, I've got myself a job, I've got myself a proper setup, I've, I've moved out of my parents' place, you know. Well, yeah, I, I'm okay, like, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not not even, I'm not even going to go that far as to move out your parents' place. I know, I'm just saying, yeah, it's so like a random... Because none of us really can give that on anyone, <laughs> really. I mean, Stewie's the only clan member that really lived out of the Shetland lot, that really lived not with his parents, but then his parents might as well live for them, they might have time to live uh, But keeping that aside, even if he just got a job, I mean, I can't really say that I gave up my job. But then I gave up my job because I'm trying to get a career. So... You moved on. I moved on. But... To be bluntly honest, to actually, if you even signed up on at the job center, I would say that's like one step closer to mm. to becoming more available to it. Like I said, Mikey would have been a really good candidate if he hadn't gone the whole. I joined the pro league team. I'm going against MLG. I don't approve of battlegrounds being feed. I don't approve of battlegrounds fees either, but I think it's. It's a sign of dedication that you're willing to, if you're going to pay money to enter a competition, uh, you're at least going to participate. Does the competition have like some kind of like uh, part at the end? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's well, like, yeah, that's the whole thing. That's what the money's going for. It's, the, the thing is, it's more like a gambling thing. You put money in. It's like you holding your bets. You're going to win the pot. Yeah. So you put in, I don't know what it is. I think it's like, it, it used to be like tw Depending on the tournament, it can be anywhere between a pound to two pound fifty to play. But you can't buy just two hundred and fifty credits. You've got to buy twenty five thousand credits, which is twenty five quid at a time. But it's for a group. For a group. Well, no, it's not for no, a group. It's it's for a person. That's per person, yeah. Right. Because the problem is, if you finish one, you then go into another one, but you still have to pay the fee to get right. into the next one. But if you don't, if you're, if you like, but the silly thing is, if you're in the top three. You don't get the price fund for the first one, but you still go on to the next one. So you might not win the 251, but you might win a thousand pound one. Yeah. And so on and how it goes. But the problem is these bladders are filled with teams. So if you don't beat the... And it's not one on... Well, you can do one on ones, but I mean... You lose three... T you lose the first competition you might not get into the second or the third and the fourth, but you still have to shell out that amount of money for the battlegrounds fees. Mm -hmm. And Mikey turned around and said, oh, I don't like how they're structured. Mikey, you're facing pro players, and you're playing on a Shetland connection. We're not entered into tournaments, but we took part in the charity league. Mm -hmm. But then again, I still had to go down to two events on the mainland and play. And this is why we had the common message, like, Mikey, you're 14, shut up. Yeah, but the problem is that the fact that he went on and yeah. slagged off, he then went to, and did it around the town. So, I mean, in my mm. aspect, I really don't think he's deserving of the control. Yeah. I don't know, but it's still, like, it's best not to take too seriously in the end. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, we won't be able to jump for the exact reason. Like, you, know, you don't go slagging off to you know, him because they are your bread and butter. No, well, it's not bread and butter. It's just it's not good practice that from too. a gamer's point of view because well, anything, there are guys out there that work bloody hard at that, mm -hmm. and MLG in itself is literally the broadcasting standpoint. It's like your NFL. It's like your um, pro sports channel uh, TV and all that, and and it's great. Without that, I mean, I've got tons of tournaments that get listed and you can go and participate in them. They're not all free, like, no. but very few of them are free. But, in a nutshell, is that it's it's bad practice because, for me, it's not so much the fact he slagged off the tournaments. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that he slagged off how much it costs. He slagged off the organisation. He slagged off the organisation, which is the only organisation. And two, that slagging off hops that earn money at this. These are the people who make the money that gives you the games to play. Yeah. You know, this isn't like slagging off Bill Gates or Bob Jobs or Bob whatever his name was of Apple. You know? These guys don't give a shit about games. They're, they're just in it for the profit. 
They're businesses. They're businesses. MLG is a non-profit organization. They run the league tournaments, but the money you put into it is the money that gets collected in the pot at the end, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, teams will win it, and the teams with the biggest membership can be in the most tournaments. It, that's just life. I mean, but two of the top teams in the world only have eight members. Well, four, technically, in some other cases. Optic Nation and Optic Gaming is two teams, even though they're under Optic. It's like Optic Gaming is one team and Optic Nation is the other, and the coach is Hex. But they're not the only players to the team. You've got Optic Jewel, Optic Midnight, you've got Optic Crew, you've got Optic... All yeah, these guys don't put videos up, but they still play competitively. Not everybody has to be a clan member in the clan team. Like, you guys, I still consider in the clan. Okay, you're not listed under the roster on Call of Duty Ghosts. Mm. But you still participate. You still come on the videos. You still help me make content. That's still participating in the clan. Stewie's going to obviously join the roster when he gets to PS4. Right. And I'll have to sit with him and 